Today we're going to talk about the success equation with trading. Stay tuned traders, we'll be right back. Good day traders, Stacy Burke from Stacy Burke Trading. It's Thursday, we've had some massive moves in the markets this week, last night the Fed but uh, during the week, gold, the pound, the euro, all giving off great trades. Today, we're going to talk about the success equation. We're going to go over some basic, hardcore principles to keep your trading simple and hopefully consistently profitable. We're going to address some questions. But before we do that, I'd like to say thank you to everybody for a ton of great feedback. And again, if you don't mind just hitting the like button, turning on your notifications, that'll update you when the latest video comes out. Let's get started. Today I'm going to talk about the success equation. I am being bombarded with emails about stuff that I don't even talk about on this channel. So I'm going to address a couple of things with regards to that. All these other questions about lots of different things regarding indicators, commitments to traders, timings, uh, the, the fixing price, lots of different stuff. Great if it's working for you. What I'm talking about here is what I do. And the reasons for that are that the simple, the sim as simple as you can make your trading, as simple as you can make your trading, you can duplicate that. But also, you hopefully will have less likelihood of damaging or destroying your trading account or engaging in bad behavior. Today we're going to review some of the things I've talked about recently as I keep receiving a lot of emails regarding timings, uh, the time change in London, uh, in New York, sorry, and that, that hasn't happened yet in London, the other time frame traders, trends, and gold and the pound. A couple of questions just about, I'm receiving a lot of questions about Bitcoin, about other currency pairs, will I do a video on that pair, this pair, Bitcoin? Uh, indexes. I don't trade those. Take your analysis or some of the information that you can learn from what I'm doing to consistently take out 50 to 100 pips day in and day out. So just to come back to a couple of other emails, I'm not here to argue or engage. I'm just showing you what I do on a daily basis. So I'm not here to entertain other ideas. This is what I do. I'm not changing it. I attack the market with a very simple process because I can duplicate that. I limit my screen time. I take out what the market gives me, 25, 50, 40, 18, 37, 75, whatever that may be. And I come back the next session. I look at other time frame traders to see who is in the market, who has just been triggered into the market because I know they're not gonna get a free ride. Whether they get up 10, 15 pips, and then the market goes back 50, end of day traders, four hour traders, hourly traders will get triggered into the market at critical times when the session opens happen. So it's important to understand the psychology behind that because a lot of people are saying, but the trend is up, but the market went down 50 pips. I'm not looking at that. What I'm looking at is where's the high and the low heading into the session? Very important, the timing window is critical for me. Now just to address the time change in New York, I have not adjusted anything on my charts. My charts automatically adjust to the New York time change. I'm not worried about London coming on an hour later or anything else. Every day the market has moved in the timing window exactly as it has normally. We've had maybe a third hour trade in the last couple days, but that window has still established a high and a low in our timing window in London as well. Uh, Tuesday, we had a 75 pip move at the Europe Open. We had a high and a low established in Europe and London yesterday. And then in the gap time, just one hour prior to the US markets, they dropped at 75 pips. New York session, same timing window. So I haven't changed anything. I still, my charts are the same. I, Go to the screen at the same time based on New York time. So it's entirely your choice. I haven't adjusted for it. I'm trading it the same because in my mind, the algorithm is running on New York time. My choice, I'm not debating it. I'm not arguing it. I don't care. The market still moves. And the critical point 
that I want to make regarding any time change is irrelevant because I'm going to work from the high and the low. High of the day, high of the session, high of the hour. If it's the high, it's the high. So I'm just reinforcing this. I'm getting some emails regarding, do I keep changing my high of the day? There's a high and there's a low. If I'm heading into the Europe Open or the Europe 12 candle window, and that's the high. When Europe opens, that's the high of the day for Europe at that stage until they make a new high. So for example, the market may have came up just prior to the 12 candle window. The market opens up and proceeds to come down. We have a new high of the day, but we also may have now a new low of the day as we head into our window. That first hour, that may have been the trade for me to be out. So again, I want to reinforce, if I can get 25 to 50 pips in that first hour, I may be done. It may be 25 down and 25 up, getting the trader who was short right off the bat. There may be a trade in that first hour that maybe only goes, they might auction down from the high into the open and work the low and come back down. And there may be a, a trade that sets up that doesn't play out. It may establish a new high and a new low, and it may be a second hour trade, whether that's New York, whether that's Asia. Typically, we will see a scenario in Asia where they will maybe move up 25 pips, but it may only be a 15 pip. They may have a pin hammer that goes up to the high before it comes back, and it may be a second hour trade for a measured move, giving us our W inside of a peak formation reversal. I'm going to come back and we're going to just talk about the basic setup. And we're going to talk about the master pattern, the basic setup. And before anybody panics, all I did was wipe off the board. Every time I erase the board and edit that out, people email me and say, you cut out part of the video. No, I just erased the whiteboard. The basic premise is that we have a high and a low. At some point, they're going to hit the stops. They hit the stops, they expand the range, there's a new high. They might come down and they might hit the stops and now we have a new low. We have a range expansion up top, a range expansion below. Sometimes we'll be in an uptrend and they'll get traders chasing that move on the first break only to come back and stop them out. So again, understanding that the way that people make money, the smart money, is by hitting stop losses. So we know there's traders who are in profit in the long trade. We now know there are traders who are in profit from the short trade. The market then comes back into consolidation. This can occur over two hours, and then it will stay there for the next four hours. And the traders are trading all this stuff inside, when in reality, they're just being, they're trading back and forth inside of this range until the next 12 candle window opens, and then they decide to come back and hit the stops and do the same thing and reverse the market or trend the market. Now, the other scenario is that this may be 15 minutes up, 30 minutes down, and then they may pull it back in, work in three pushes and roll the market over for a trend trade or pull it up and keep going back in the original direction of the trend. The point I am trying to emphasize is that this is where I am working up here and up here, down here and up here. This typically will be a minimum of 25 pips. It may be double zeros and 25, it may be 75 and 50, it could be 50 and 25. But on average, most pairs, whether it's the pound, the euro, gold, your high and your low will be at least 25 pips apart. Now, we may be in a 50 pip box because we might be at double zeros here. This might be 25 and this might be 50 up here. And they may be selling this down inside of double zeros, trapping volume below the quarter before they shift it away. Everybody stops these higher, uh, lower highs. The stops are above. They've got a whole quarter of volume. We saw it yesterday in gold. They dropped it down 75 pips 
They had everybody trapped above 50. Very simple. Success equation. You only have to decide two things. How much you're going to lose and how much you're going to make. Entry, engulfments, and pin hammers. We're going to review gold, the pound, and the euro from yesterday. Where you're going to put your stop. It's a one bar stop and what your profit target is going to be. For me, on average, on gold, it's going to be 25 to 50. Sometimes we might get up to 25, and I'll get out at the numbers. It might be 23. It might be 35. It might be 18. It might be 62. Depends on where the high and low are, if I'm going after a target, or if we're trading into major round numbers, I'll exit that potentially maybe with the round numbers minus the spread. Depends on how strong that move has been how long it's been in that move, all of those things. But I'll initial, my initial profit target will automatically go in at 25 or 50. There's one of three things. It's going to be a trend trade, a reversal trade, or a range-bound market where you're trading in a trading range. You could be trading just back and forth in the 25 pip box. You might only be able to get 18 pips out of that. You might, if you're trading the euro, you might, be, you might get 18 pips from low to high. Those sort of scenarios, depending on the instrument that you're trading. So if you're not trading gold or the pound, whatever instrument you are trading, the same principles apply. There's a high and a low. Most stop hunts on average will be 25 to 50 pips. So if the market moves from the high to the low, that could be a 25 pip stop hunt. We could be done. We could decide that 25 pips is enough for this session and that market set up for the type of market it is today, whatever that may be. Take our 25 pips, come back later for the U.S. session or London, whatever that may be. Or we may be looking at this as a strong move. The market's come down 25. It's given us a nice W at the London Open, and we go long, and we might get 25 up, and we get two hours, uh, 50 pips. We say, okay, that's pretty good. We'll come back later. I'm looking at trade setups that are scalable. So I'm looking at my M's, my W's, my pin hammers. Now... We'll look at some specific examples. Asia this morning, one, two, three, pin hammer right at the open after a strong, huge move up with the Fed and a pullback into the close of 25 pips. My thesis was this market's going to carry through and take out the high of the day again. That market went up straight up 25, triggered the, the uh, high, pulled back, Went back in the second hour, went up for the second 25, and then followed through for another 25 to the 50 pip increment at the end of the three hour window. So understand, it's as simple and as complicated as you want to make it. Now there's a lot of people out there who want to argue about different theories and philosophies, and it's, it's great, that's fine if it's working for you, but I'm not interested. I'm just looking at simplicity, hitting the trades, putting my stop in place, having my profit target, and being done. I'm taking it off the table. I'm not going to argue about if it was an uptrend, a downtrend, whatever else, but I'm paying attention to who's in the market at that timing window. Have they triggered other time frame traders already? Have we had three, four hour bars moving up in a one, two, three? Have we attracted end of day traders into the market? If so, how far has that move gone? Because I know they're not going to get a free lunch. At some point, there'll be a pullback to put heat into their, into their position. So again, if they got in at the break of today's high, it went up 25 plus pips, but now they're underwater because if they haven't taken money off the table, they're now sitting in negative equity, those sorts of scenarios. And so coming back to understanding that whatever your approach is, if it's working for you, great. Now, my approach is that I want to be in when the market's going to move, take my money off the table. I want to have a one bar stop. I want to know that that market's going to move and behave exactly in that manner where it's going to go back quickly and aggressively because it's going to stop out traders. Stop hunts will typically be fast, impulsive moves. Creeping trends are what will build up to a fast move, whether it's a blow off in the direction of that creep or a reversal for a false break, hitting all the stops on those higher lows or lower highs and going right back to the bottom or top of the range. So. The success equation for me is keeping it simple. I want to be in that timing window. Why? Because I know they're going to hit the stops. Again, understand, high and a low. Hit the stops, hit the stops, 
trend the market. We have a bar chart that looks like this at the end of the day, or it looks like this at the end of the day. And in between, we got all this other stuff, but it's the same principle. Every session starts and they will either go to the high or go to the low and continue a trend, or they'll hit the stops, they'll hit the stops, they'll pull it back in, consolidate it, and then reverse the market or trend it from there. Sometimes they'll stay in the trading range and they gain three scenarios. First hour, there's a trade. It could be a stop on, it could be a trend trade. It could be a continuation trade to the high and follow through for an extra 25. Trend trade for 50 pips, you're done. London goes into consolidation and reverses. That's a third hour trade. If I'm already done, as I've said before, there's other trades, but I just want to be there for that hour, hopefully, and be done. The longer I'm at the screen, the more likely I'm, I'm potentially can enter into lower possibility trade setups. Second hour, if there's no trade, if they've moved it in the pre-market, the, the first hour may consolidate. The second hour may be the trade. So again, you're either done, there's a trade, there's no trade, or you missed it. Third hour, there could be a trade or it's done and you're back inside. And if you're back inside, now you're playing with fire because you could be caught inside where they're just trapping volume and the market's already made its move and it's going to stay consolidated until it heads into that pre-market just before the US or London 12 candle window. So again, that four hour cycle, understanding the importance of the four hour time frame because if they pull it back inside, you may be sitting there trying to trade for the next two hours and it's not going to go anywhere which is why it's important to understand the hourly lows and highs because when they trigger those, they may be triggering them into the wrong break, uh, direction for a false break and a reversal in the other direction. You may be shorting a market that you think is trending down. You trade the break, that market reverses and goes back for another hour in the other direction and hits the stops on the opposite side. So keep it simple, high and low, okay? High and low of the day, high and low of the session, the high and the low, whatever that is. If you're going up, into the open, there's a high, and if there's a low way down here, well obviously the market may put in a higher low at some point. Or the market may put in a peak formation and reverse, a, mid, a middle structure, pulling back, now you've got the higher low up here, and then they come up and roll this over, there's your measured move with structure for two times that distance down in the other way. Review the other videos, there's plenty on there about this. Keep it as simple as possible, you can argue about all kinds of different things. But if it's not helping show in the bottom line of your trading results, don't waste your time anymore doing that. Wipe the slate clean, keep it simple. Because trading, if you're in the same place you were last year or the year before or the year before that, what's gonna be different next week, next month, next year? Keep it simple. Step away from the screen. Trading is about lifestyle. So if you're sitting there for hours and hours pulling your hair out to get 10 pips and uh, you took four trades to end up plus 10 at the end of the day, you have to sit down and ask yourself a question. Am I doing this in the best manner possible to get the, the results that I'm after? So I wanna squeeze as much out of the market as I can with a maximum effective dose, minimum in terms of my exposure to the market Simplicity. I know they're going to move the market. It moves every time the 12 candle window starts. Bang, they hit the stops. If they hang around, they hang around, they hang around. I'm thinking second hour trade. But again, that's if they've already moved the market 50 pips. So, pound a little bit different. 25, the other pairs, the US pairs are usually around 25. But if they've moved it 25 to a lower or high peak formation, higher low of the week, you're looking at potential 50 pip moves or more. Tonight we have Bank of England. So again, questions about the news. I do not trade in front of the news, but I will definitely trade after the news. I redraw my highs and lows, 15 minute, one minute bars. So again, after there's, if there's been a big bar, I wait for that market to go into consolidation for the next 15 to 30 minutes. I redraw those highs and lows if I'm not already in the move. So if I'm in the market, I will be at break even looking at a news release as a potential blow off to complete a move. Meaning that if that market, if I'm already in a trade and we're, and we're in the news, meaning I've already been in that trade for, you know, obviously maybe 45 minutes or whatnot, which would be unusual because most of these trades move very quickly. But the news would be an opportunity to complete the move if not exiting just prior to the release of that news. But I do not trade the news itself. 
or get in front of the news. So hopefully that clarifies some things. Keep it simple, traders. You can argue and discuss lots of theories and practices, but at the end of the day, it's about being profitable, being consistent, and being able to scale it up in size and keeping it as simple as possible and as little as stress as possible. So thanks again. Tons of great feedback. End the week on a strong note. We're going to have some big moves Thursday, Friday. Uh, again, BOE tonight. Um, and gold, we're, we've come off monthly and yearly lows, so we could be looking at a possible large range few days coming up, either heading back up or some volatility working back down towards the lows. Stay disciplined, stay focused, have a great trading session, and may the markets go with you. Okay, traders, we're looking at the pound, and just to review on Tuesday, Tuesday, Wednesday, so Tuesday we saw the pound auction. First of all, on Monday, the market pulled back as we headed into the U.S. session close, but we hit the previous day's low, triggering short traders potentially who are in the market on a break of the Friday's low. But the market pulls back one push, two push, three pushes into the beginning of the next day at round numbers at double zeros, and then proceeds to roll over, taking out the initial low of the day. So again, just highs and lows, breaking through the low of the day. So. Three types of things markets do. They break out, they pull back, and they trend. They break out, they pull back, and reverse. They break out, pull back, and go into a trading range. But today we're talking about the process, just the highs and lows. And the market triggered other time frame traders. So again, understanding the psychology that when other time frame traders often are triggered into the market, that the market will then proceed to put heat into them. So they're in the market and all of a sudden they're down almost 50 pips, 25 plus before it eventually rolls over into our 12 candle window. And again, you'll notice the lower M structure, again, highs and lows, breaking through and following through. We see the straddle bar straddling not only the previous day's low, but the 50. So breakout traders again are in. Traders are short at the beginning of the 12 candle window on a trend trade. We already have the breakout, the pullback, and the continuation, the engulfment, and then the follow through. But again, understanding that other time frame traders are in the market. The market comes down 25 pips below the previous day's low. So the average stop hunt again, 25 to 50 pips, they extend the range out before pulling back and then working into the low a second time. One, two, three, bullpen hammer, second follow through on the bear candle, no follow through to the low, the engulfment of the bull candle of the lower three bars, and then the fast 50 pip move back up. So peak formation low, low of the week, the extended W. Hit the stops, hit the stops, engulf and reverse. We have a trend example and a 25 pip stop hunt, a retest of the low, an engulfment, and a 50 pip stop hunt plus back up to the high of the day. The next day we come into consolidation. We start our process again. We have our high by the blue line. We have our low of the day. Now I don't typically trade the pound in Asia, but an example of where the market comes off double zeros, hits the stops at the low of the day before pulling back inside, and then coming down at the end of the Asian session in the gap time to the low of the day. So again, this lower high is evident. It's ripe fruit, it's low hanging fruit. And we get a bullpen hammer at the low of the day, giving us our W structure heading into the Europe 12 candle window for a fast 25 plus pip 50 from high to low move, taking out not only the high of the day, but the previous day's high. So now we have triggered other time frame traders again into the market. One push, two push, three pushes before pulling back into consolidation. The market then in the gap time, stop hunts up into the peak formation, getting traders who are short on the large bear candle reversal. But understanding too, now we have other time frame traders that are in the market at the high of the day. So if you were long at this previous day's high, you're back and forth around your fill price 
before they drop it down and hit the higher lows, the same as they hit the lower highs, but it hits the stops and pulls back inside. So again, false break, hits the stops, reversal. And then we proceed to work back up into the high of the bear candle from just previous to our beginning of the 12 candle window. One push, two pushes, three pushes, bear pin hammer, and the fast move down to the low of the day. So again, three peaks, and then a one, two, three in our US session into the previous day's high. And then one push down, two pushes down, and one, two, three into the Fed for the explosive squeeze back up. And again, emphasizing process each session, drawing our highs and lows. So when we have a lower high, we draw our lower high, we have a higher low. They come down one, two, three, they hit the stops. They come back up and hit the stops. They make a new in inside high of the peak formation. So again, understanding where are they going into? They're going into the traders who are short, the high bull. So this trader's in the money. So it doesn't have to take out the high. They're coming back to get them at break even. They come back in three pushes. How do we know it's not going through? Well, they didn't go through. They went one push, pulled it back, two pushes, pulled it back. They went a third push and a bear pin hammer. That's how we know. And they're not following through. If this was going through, it would have went one push and went right through. So common sense. We're in the new session. We have a high and a low. We have a low of the day now. They break through the low, go right to the low of the day, and then the Fed explodes back up. Today we have traders triggered long on the break of the previous day's high. And of course, again, emphasizing other time frame traders are in the market before they pull it back and they put heat into these traders. Now this, this market may proceed to work its way back up. We are now inside and we have a high and a low. We're underneath the 50. This market could break back up above that lower high, pull back to 50 and continue up. Or we may see this market work into 50 and roll back over to retest the low. Currently though, there's our lower high, there's our high low. We have other time frame traders triggered into the market already. So obviously we have stops above the high of the day. How price behaves from this point is what's critical. We're not predicting, we're not suggesting, we're gonna respond to how price behaves when it gets to those levels. So we're looking at gold and again, a classic example, uh, you know, emphasizing again, we're in a box. Okay, there's our high heading into the yesterday's session. We have our low. The market locked in a low of the day at double zeros towards the end of the session. They worked back down into the zeros before pulling back again. And a third push down before pulling back again. So zero is my low of the day. We're closed in consolidation and heading into the next day above zero. Below 25 and above zero, we have our lower high and our higher low for our current low of the day and high of the day. Obviously, we're inside of the four hour high and low. So again, understanding that other time frame traders have not been triggered yet, and we're inside of a high low in the current day. But we see the market come down. This is a 15 minute chart. We'll show the one minute entries. But the green boxes that I've drawn here are to emphasize these are the areas that I'm working from. I'm looking to be working at the low as I drew on the whiteboard. So I'll, I'm, no indicators. We don't have to have a whole bunch of crap on our charts. Uh, we don't need to worry even if we're New York's changed their time frame and London's different and blah, blah, blah. We have a high and a low. They've gone to the low in our 12 candle window. Even if I'm an hour out and they go to the higher or the low and there's a, there's a trade on the one minute, I'm going to hit that trade. We're above zeros. They've locked in the low of the day. We have a short trade up top. So my thesis is that they will hit the stops. They could have hit them up top first and got people in early. They went up to the high first. They didn't, they didn't go all the way through, but they went up to the high first before coming down. We're in the 25 pip box. So again, 25 pips is our average trading range, typically heading into a session. They go up to 25 and then down, hit the stops before pulling back and continuing up getting traders at break even who shorted the US session high. The market then proceeds to go into consolidation from 75, so again, three levels of rise, 25, 25, 25, one, two, three, to 75, before pulling back to 50. And again, on the one minute chart, we'll 
show three pushes down with a W bullpen hammer for the stop hunt back to the high. And again, emphasizing we have our, we draw our processes. We draw the high and the low, and then we wait. We have a rectangle down below. They move it up 75 pips. Now we have a rectangle up top. They could be trending. I don't know, but I know we have a high and a low. I'm going to trade back to the high or down to the low if the one minute chart gives me a trade setup. These pins are where the stops were hit. They went up and made a high. They hit the high. They come down in the second hour. They made a low and they hit the low. Pulled it back inside. One push up, two pushes up, three pushes up. Inside bar one hour prior to the U.S. session 12 candle window for an explosive stop hunt to the low of the day and the low of the previous day. Hitting all the stops. Going into consolidation first though in the U.S. session. And again, we will show a double inside bar engulfment at 50 after the blow off move for a 75 pip move up and again these are trades that i did take yesterday um, slight variation in profit targets but we'll talk about the entries understanding the other time frame traders were triggered before the fed they come back nobody gets a free lunch they put heat on traders that have held on to this hitting stops potentially on some of them stopping them out at break even or with a loss whatever if they chase the move before the explosive move up into the Fed. Again, this morning, the thesis being this, there will be some follow-through after a huge move like that. And again, there was a bullpen hammer on a little one, two, three right off the bat on the one-minute chart. We get three pushes up on the 15-minute chart before the engulfment as the new four-hour and one-hour candle kick in at 50 at the high of the day on a one, two, three for a 50-pip stop hunt back down. Now, again, I'm, I'm just emphasizing process and simplicity not you know all kinds of stuff and fibonacci retracements and everything else and again you know whatever's working for you works i'm talking about i want to come to the session draw my high and low i want stops to be hit i want a engulfment bullpen hammer uh i did not short this i did take the long trade off double zeros my thesis heading in was that we were going up they'd already locked in the lows i was looking for a trade off the bottom after stops were hit i did take this trade this was a 50 pip move up from the low. Now, obviously, the market did go higher. And again, understanding when other time frame traders came into the market, the new hour was triggered short before coming back and hitting the stops. The four hour candle, the new four hour bar is in. They hit the stops. Trigger breakout traders. We go into our new session. We draw our high, we draw our low. We get one push down, two pushes down three pushes down into our new 12 candle window and a W engulfment on the fourth push. Then we get our bullpen hammer for the entry long. Now this market then proceeded, my, my original thesis was I expected this to follow through quite strongly and continue up to double zeros for a 50 pip move. But we ended up working this in three pushes and then a one, two, three to the high when the engulfment candle came in there was two scenarios i saw with the little bar we would either break the high and continue or we would engulf i exited the trade with 16 pips and again that's what the market took but then there was a short trade down 16 up 16 down uh one push two push third push and didn't go i'm out of the trade so again you'll notice it did take out the low of the bullpen hammer so sometimes the market will not go all the way down but it had time. It did take out the low of where that move originated from. Important to understand. The second hour opens up. So the first hour puts a new high in place. The second hour opens up and proceeds to put a new low in place. Puts a new low in place and pulls back. Two pushes down and then a third push down before they engulf the low and stay inside of the range. So again, creeping trend down that doesn't eventuate it stop hunts back up to the high. We're in the gap time now. Our new four hour window kicks in. They hit stops on the one hour traders before pulling back and hitting the high of that new hour. So again, understanding other time frame traders being in the market. On our 15 minute chart, we talked about three pushes and an inside bar. On our one minute chart, we see this market hit the stops before dropping down and engulfing the entire upper structure, consolidating and then falling away, hitting stops at the low of the day. So just emphasizing, number one, the 12 candle window, highs and lows. 
when the market consolidates inside and the new four hour window kicks in and other time frame traders are activated into the market, we may have other opportunities present. When we get a huge move like this, we start the process again. We draw our high and our low. We head into our 12 candle window. The market proceeds to make new highs. Now, some traders may have taken this long. They take this market long on the bear pin, candle pin, bull pin reversal. You'd be exiting or be a break even, but the market has made a new high. So we redraw our high and low. We have our low of the day. We have our high of the day. The market then proceeds to trade sideways. So big move, as I mentioned on the whiteboard, first hour could be a consolidation. Second hour, New York opens. The equity market stop hunts down to the low of the day without taking out the overall lows. It just trades down to the low of the previous hour before pulling back in two pushes, hitting stops on traders that are short. So again, understanding these traders may have been in the market trying to get out at the low or trading through to the low. The market doesn't let them out. It comes back and hits stops drops down and engulfs the upper three bars. Remember, we're working from the high and the low. They hit the stops, engulfment, bear pin hammer, double zeros for a 25 pip move down to the low of the day. Pulls back one, two inside bar for the blow off move and the double inside bar engulfment after hitting the previous day's low. So again, understanding other time frame traders are in the market. Understanding the timing window, 15 minute rotations, the blow off candle, the double inside bar engulfment at 50 for the fast explosive move back up through the high of the US session. Now, these are all trades I did take. The trade off of 50, I exited with 25 pips. My thesis was that they possibly would come back and hit my trade at break even at least. And after the third trade, in a fast moving market, although it looks docile, it was moving quite rapidly back and forth. I just was content at that stage in that, that time frame for me to exit the trade with 25 pips. I don't typically trade that late into the US, but obviously again, they came back hitting stops on traders that were in the market. Again, nobody gets a free lunch. They don't let the end of day trader out. The Fed blows off back up through the high of the day before going into consolidation. Again, as we talked about the beginning of the session, thesis, big strong move into the close of the US. We draw our high, we draw our low. I saw the W, they had locked in the low. My thesis that was that they would follow through to the high of the day again. And right off the bat, we get our fake M formation and the bullpen hammer engulfment of the middle structure for the reversal. I was long off of this bar and again understanding just one bar stops. Uh, scalable trades, they gave me the W, they locked in the low, they came back in, they pinned down to 75 after the false M. Uh, the In a long position, strong moving market, looking for a second day follow through for a 50 pip target. I had two positions, one for 25, a second to follow through for 50. I left it a break even. First one was hit. Second one I thought I might get stopped out on, but as you can see, they came back and put heat on the breakout trade. My position was still intact. It went up and hit the 50 pips on the second hour. The market then proceeds to head into our new four hour window. At the beginning of that hour, they hit stops at the high, triggering hourly breakout traders in the second hour of our four hour window before engulfing and coming all the way back down 75 pips. So understanding that new four hour traders are in the market at the break of the breaks of the highs as well as hourly trapping traders up high consolidation underneath the engulfment and the 75 pip move down hitting stops on all the traders that are long above double zeros. So nobody gets a free lunch. And again, just coming back to the basics, where's my high, where's my low, how does price behave, are we looking for a trend trade, a, a stop hunt, reversal, simple stuff. Keep it simple traders, stay disciplined, have a great trading session, and may the markets Hi, traders, go with you. Hi traders, it's Stacey Burke from Stacey Burke Trading. 
If you haven't done so, please head over to my website at stacyburktrading.com. I create updates on almost a daily basis and I would love for you to receive them. Just click on the blog. If you want to enter your name and your email address, I'll send you my free audio program, The 7 Step Daily Routine for High Performance Traders. This is essential knowledge for all traders in all markets. And this is for helping traders to master the market with discipline, confidence, and a winning mindset. I appreciate all your feedback and comments. As always, traders, stay disciplined and may the markets go with you.